And so I told my wife, I looked at her that, at that Disneyland, I said, when I get home, I swear to God, I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna fucking get my shit together. Got home, got rid of every narcotic in my house, every pill, got rid of everything. Next day, started going to the gym. I went through days of withdrawals, but still go to the gym. And then the gym became my drug and I just started. But this is the first time we've got together. We just stayed in touch and now we've got our work head in. But you do have an inspiring story. Now, to those watching here that don't know anything about us or about you, just tell us a little bit about your background and then how you got into this yeah. whole thing. So, uh, yeah, I was in the military. I was in the Army. I was a grunt, so an infantryman. Um, I was in for almost 10 years when I got medically retired, but uh, did two tours. My first tour in 0506 to Iraq. Uh, came back, re enlisted, became a sergeant. Um, 2009, 2010, I was sent to Afghanistan with my new unit uh, out of Washington State. And uh, I was there for a whole year, was about ready to come home. Uh, went out on my very last uh, night patrol. And uh, when we were out on that patrol, the vehicle that I was commanding was hit by a pressure plate IED. So it's basically like when something rolls over the top of it, it just fucking explodes and destroys whatever is on top of it. And so that being me, you know, was on top of it. Uh, uh, yeah, it got blown up. Next thing I wake up and I just realized that, okay, something's bad. I can't feel my legs. You know? How many of you were in the in There the was vehicle? 12. And I took the, but it was a targeted attack kind of a thing. Um, basically, the enemy knows from how far that tire is from how far I am standing out of the hatch. And they know whoever's standing out of the hatch is the highest ranking one in that vehicle. Wow, they pretty point so, to that. Yeah, much. fucking Google, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, yeah, they probably yeah. went on there and found out, like, just get the measurements or tracks. They're, they're smart. They're not fucking stupid people. And, um, and so, yeah, I just detonated directly underneath where I was standing and uh, came all the way through. And then pretty much when I woke up, I just couldn't feel my legs. Um, I was pretty much pinned down and I had a lot of uh, like burning going on in my legs and stuff like that because batteries and whatever else was burning all my legs. And uh, so I'm, I deal with second and third degree burns all down my quads as well. But um, first thing I started doing was yelling at my soldiers to get out of the vehicle. And uh, as soon as they got out, I tried to get myself out and I realized like, oh, I can't move, you know, I'm pretty fucking bad. And so I started like assessing myself. And I had my leg at the time, but it was um, basically just mushed. Like the bones were just done. Yeah. And then my um, right leg, it was all there, it was good. And I was like, all right, we're good, what the fuck's going on? And I just couldn't move. And so two of my soldiers came back in, picked me up and started dragging me out. And then I realized like this leg was just kind of swinging around. So I dislocated my whole knee and I had to have it reconstructed as well. And then this one, I just still couldn't like even feel it at all. Um, long story short, I got medevac then got medevac from the, uh, Afghanistan to Germany, and then from Germany to uh, the States, and I was at Walter Reed, which is the main yeah. hospital for the military for severely wounded, and so um, I, was, I went through about six months of uh, recovery trying to save my leg, and, and then in November 2010, I decided, I was like, fuck this, just, just take, cut it off and let me just start over, you know, and uh, the pain was just so bad. You know, like they had a halo, which is like, these, it's a thing that it's like a cage that goes around your leg and it just has these pins that go into it. And hopefully, in hopes to fuse the bones back together. But uh, even after they took that off, I was in so much pain. Uh, it was just, it was just the, the chance of me doing what I'm doing now, probably literally impossible. I just wouldn't be able to handle it. And so I just made the decision one day to just go ahead and amputate it and did it. And uh, I haven't regretted it, you know, at all. And did you deal with phantom pain at all? I did, for a long time. Um, it took me, honestly, probably like six, seven months to get over the phantom pain, I'd say. Really weird how funny the mind is. And, and it comes, and I use that for when I do what I do now, like powerlifting or lifting weights, the mind, because what I realized was is I had phantom pain, and that's all nerve stuff. So it's mind, nerve, that's what controls the nerve, you know? And so it was as soon as I got my socket and I put my leg on, I was, my eyes looked down and I saw a foot, there's no phantom pain. Because my mind thinks, oh, he has a foot. So the phantom pain for me went away. Um, and then, you know, eventually sometimes at night when I take it off, I'll feel it because obviously I don't have my leg on when I'm sleeping. Yeah. But yeah, I just, my eye sees a foot and I don't have the phantom pains when I'm like that. Yeah, and so started rehabbing. Um, at that whole time I was going through rehab to try to learn how to walk on this, this leg was still, um, my knee was still just like uh, unstable. I hadn't had knee uh, reconstruction yet. So I went about a whole year and a half with um, an unstable knee because I had to learn how to walk on this so I could crutch around uh, uh, on this leg to rehab this leg. So it was two years of just surgeries and then I ended up having like 38 surgeries within two years to get my whole body back to normal. Um, three years of full rehab to 
be able to like leave the army and live on my own. So I lived in a hospital on and off for three years. And then uh, uh, came home and uh, really had nothing to do. I was, you know, I didn't have a job. I got pushed out of the military. I wasn't getting paycheck yet. I have a wife, I have a daughter. Uh, I had been on uh, Oxycontins, methadone, you name it, everything for so long. And they were still giving it to me, so I got addicted to them, you know? And then I got depressed because I couldn't work. I couldn't do nothing. And so I just sat around and I was just just taking pills, playing video games, just doing shit, and just basically, literally letting life go by. And I had an eye, I had an eye opener, I've told the story many times, because my daughter, as I get like emotional because my baby, you know, but I had like an eye opener with her because we went to Disneyland for her birthday, and uh, I couldn't even walk Disneyland. I was in so much pain. And it wasn't that I couldn't, it's just that I had let myself go so far that I wasn't- Keeping up? Yeah, I just wasn't conditioned at my body, you know, and I'm sitting there like, this is bullshit. There's, Double amputees running marathons, and I can't walk fucking Disneyland, you know. And uh, it basically like it, 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 it ruined the whole weekend, kind of a thing. You know, it wasn't as fun as it should have been. And so I told my wife, I looked at her that, at that Disneyland, I said, when I get home, I swear to God, I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna fucking get my shit together. Got home, got rid of every narcotic in my house, every pill. Got rid of everything. Next day, started going to the gym. I went through days of withdrawals, but still go to the gym. And then the gym became my drug and I just started feeling really good about myself and everything started coming into play and then I, people were just freaking out. You know, I was insecure so I wore sweatpants. So I was only like 170 pounds, I wasn't strong, I'm fucking man, we all have egos. You know what I mean? And so uh, one day I, somebody saw that I was an amputee and we started talking and they were just like, dude, what the fuck, like, it's incredible what you're doing. Like, you should start a social media or Instagram and, and like inspire people. And so I set out to do that because I've been where most people have been. I've been at that low point. I've been on the, like the drug addiction side, you know, and I've been everywhere that anybody could possibly be. So I figured I'm gonna put my body through hell and I'm gonna do whatever I can and hopefully it can change somebody's life. And that's what I've been doing for two years now. That's amazing. And, and you do anything like with the military in specific? Yeah, because I mean, get a lot of no, of I get a lot of amputees mostly. Um, there's a couple of military organizations that I will work with and do things with. Um, but honestly, it's just, it's, it's, I get a lot of amputees, um, but I get a lot of people that are just pure, flat out inspired, period. You know, it, they don't have to be overweight, depressed, whatever. And uh, the one thing that I told myself was, because of what I'm trying to do is, I'm gonna use the social media to do that. I'm, I'm going to talk to everybody as much as I can. I don't care if I have 1.2 million followers one day. I will take the time to go through my DMs, respond back to people. Um, I mean, I literally have had multiple people write me, be suicidal bound, and me catch it and respond back to them and talk to them. Fucking call, call me, I don't care, we'll figure this out. And the, now to this day, six months, seven months, eight months later, their life is like changing because we, we chatted, you know? And so, uh, and, and that means more to me than anything. And so it's, all of this has just become a big addiction for me. And then I've met, you know, you, Michael Hearn, Michael, she's CT, and everybody just got around me and they see what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, I've just, and they're all about it. Everybody's about it. And that's what, I mean, that's what the fitness industry is about. It's pure motivation, pure inspiration from all of us. My thing is like, I've already been blown apart, put back together. I'm down to get blown apart underneath some iron and get put back together. You know what I mean? I tell you, I, I, I love it that much. That I, I mean, CT have talked about this. I said, I would rather die getting crushed under iron than die not doing shit. 